Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. I'm really excited for today's episode, and here's why. There is a holiday coming up that most people love, but is sometimes a nightmare if you have a dog, and that holiday is Halloween. So we're going to dive into three ways that you can prepare now so that when Halloween happens and when Halloween comes up, you're going to, uh, your dog will be more prepared and you're going to be able to handle it and not be stressed and overwhelmed. So let's get right to it. The first thing we're going to talk about for how you can prep uh, your dog for Halloween. Number one is the night of Halloween. You need to make some preparations for yourself, like, and for your dog that are going to set them up for success. So if that means, you know, you are going to have people coming to the door, getting candy, having kids come to the door to get candy. If you need to set up a baby gate so that your, your dog can't even come in, if you need to have them in a different room, if you need to completely limit access to the door, do that. If your dog isn't well behaved enough that they can handle the knocks on the door or people coming to the door, then don't even give them access to it. Like that's on you as the pup parent to make sure that that, that they can handle it, that they're not put into a situation that they can't handle. Um, and part of that as well is going to be, you know, keeping windows closed, even putting blinds up. Like if your dog likes to look out the window, like keep the shades down, keep, keep blinds covered, you know, so that your dog can't see out, see all the people, potentially dogs walking by that type of thing. Um, and even using white noise machines, you can use, um, you know, just a speaker, you can use a smart speaker. Most of them have, you know, options where you can play some white noise, things like that, things that are just going to help your dog be as successful as possible. So that's like the preparation side of things for the day of Halloween. And then the next two things are behaviors that if you start now, and you really focus on now for the next 10 days or so, you'll see much better success on Halloween night. So the first one, or the first behavior, so the second thing you're, you can do to prepare your dog for Halloween is practice a strong leave it. So if you have um, a little bit older dog or like maybe still in the puppy stage and their leave it's pretty strong, what you're gonna wanna do is take this to the next step. You're, you're gonna wanna add in dropping things on the ground. Let me tell you why. So if you're having people over or if you're doing anything in your house, there's gonna be a lot of different snacks, particularly candy, most of which is very bad for dogs, especially because a lot of candies have chocolate in them. So you need to practice candy being dropped on the ground and your dog not going for it, your dog being able to leave it. You need to practice that before it's Halloween. So, you know, you, you set this situation up before it even occurs. You know, you you get uh, you know a toy that they like or something that is enticing to them, and you know you start small. If your dog already has somewhat of a grasp of leave it, you can you know get them into a lay down, and you can drop something and be prepared to cover it. Right? You you don't want to give them access to the thing that you want them to leave because then they won't understand that behavior. But you know dropping things from the ground or from from up above that hit the ground, and your dog being able to understand how to leave that behind or not, not go after that is going to be a super, super important behavior. If you want more ideas on how to teach a strong, leave it, um, download the Pupford app and in under the train by behavior section, there is a leave it and even a leave it. Look at me combo, which is super important. Um, Zach teaches this as part of the 30 perfect pup course that we offer. Uh, it's in the Pupford app. Because, you know, if, if that piece of candy falls on the ground, not only do you want your dog to leave it, but you want them to look at you so that you can get their attention and redirect them and get them to do something else. So leave it, look at me combo, super, super powerful for Halloween. Who knows what's going to get dropped on the ground? You don't want your dog to go after it. The next behavior and the third thing that you can do to prepare your dog for Halloween is teaching the place behavior. We talk about this one a lot. Sorry, you might hear my dogs in the background. They're just puttering around. Who knows? Doing what? Um, you want to teach your dog place. And let me be honest with you. If you have never taught your dog the place behavior, if you're starting from scratch, you might not be completely ready for Halloween, but you can start now and you can get some foundational work done. 
how you're going to teach the place behavior, it you kind of want to break it down into steps and increments. Um, and for a more detailed explanation of this, you can uh, check out Tone and Impulse Control Games. It's a part of Pupford Academy, available in the app and on the Pupford website. Um, but I'll give you a brief explanation. So you want like a bed or a mat or something um, that your dog likes to lay on or is, will be willing to lay on. Um, I like using my dog's beds because um, they're typically out anyways. So how are you going to how are you going to start? Is you're going to just lure your dog on to that bed. I'll say bed place. That's what I'm referring to. You're going to lure your dog onto the bed. As soon as their front paws hit, you mark and reward. Even if just one paw hits, you mark and reward. And you repeat that a few times and you make sure that you take them off of the place each time. You keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. Once your dog is kind of starting to understand that, that you're, you know, they'll start anticipating being lured onto the bed. Then you start only start marking and rewarding once all four paws are on the bed and repeat that multiple times. Again, you remove them from the bed each time you lure them off or you throw a treat. You need that motion of them getting off of the place and then going onto the place. You can continue the luring. And then this time you're only going to, you know, mark and reward when they go and sit on their place, you know, so you can, you can get them onto their place and then either wait for them to sit or kind of guide them into a sit. You can guide them into a lay down, whatever one you want to do. Um, but again, you're taking those small steps of progression. And then as you, as you continue with this, and again, this is not going to happen in one session. It's not going to happen in one day, uh, but as you are continuing with this, you can start to phase in your keyword, which is, you know, you're luring them on and you're saying place. And then as soon as they get four paws on there, mark and reward. And eventually over time, you're going to phase out the lure and you're just going to start either using a hand signal, start just using the word and get them to anticipate to go on to their place. Over time, you want your dog to understand that place means I go there, I stay until I'm released. I'm not barking. I'm not, you know, running to the door, that type of thing. The power of this place behavior is if your dogs struggle with barking at the door, which is going to happen a lot, there's going to be a lot of people knocking on the door, or ringing your doorbell on Halloween. Probably if you can say, you know, every time that happens, you teach them to go to their place, they can stay. You can give them a reward. You can even give them like a quick little, you know, chew dog chew or something to just reward them. You go to the door, you handle the door, they stay in their place. And then once you're done with the door exchange, you can release your dog and they can go about their business again. So again, let me preface this or, you know, emphasize again that teaching the place behavior takes a lot of time, work and effort and patience. But if you start now, you can get a better, you can start to get lay the groundwork for, you know, your dog being able to understand that behavior. Um, but above all, if you, if your dog you know, if you, if you, you're just starting on place, you know, Halloween is like 10 days away. You're probably going to have to just limit your dog's exposure to the front door, whether you use a baby gate, whether you keep them in a different room, you have them in a crate, whatever it might be, you need to be proactive. You can't just expect to open the door. There's a bunch of kids, loud kids wearing masks. Odds are your dog is going to not respond well if they haven't been trained before, if they're not good with people at the door, you know, kids are like, the X factor of, of dog challenging behaviors because they're unpredictable, they're loud. In this case, they're wearing masks, they're wearing costumes. It can confuse your dog, it can frighten them. So in many instances, you will just need to not allow your dog to have exposure to what is happening at the front door. So again, those three things that you can do to prepare your dog for Halloween. Number one, prepare your home, you know, have do as much as you can to set your dog up for success, whether it's keeping them away from the door, having curtains drawn, having a white noise machine, you know, maybe you're not even going to have candy. You're just going to put a bowl out front, those types of things. Um, number two is teaching a strong leave it, um, with all the candies that might get dropped on the ground. You don't want your dog going after one of them, especially if there's chocolate. And number three is teaching the place behavior. I gave you a quick rundown. There are a lot of resources where you can find how to you know, more fully understand how to teach place, I recommend checking out 21 impulse control games. It's on the Pupford website in the Pupford app. Um, it really breaks it down step by step on how you teach the place behavior to your dog. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was a quick one. I just wanted to give you some things to think about about 10 days or so before Halloween. Um, it can be stressful as a pup parent. So do as much as you can now to prepare. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, and subscribe. If you're on a if you're listening on a podcast platform, 
please leave us a review or send us a DM or email us hello at pupford.com. We love hearing the feedback about the podcast, hearing what you like, hearing what you don't like, you know, give us ideas for episodes you want to hear, those types of things. So thank you again for listening and watching, and we will catch you on the next episode. Mm -hmm.